So you wanted something more akin to the American? I can system. afford it. I can afford it. Oh, cool. Great great for you. What about people who can't do it? Should they just go die? Well, that's unfortunate. But then, so, you so know, you're saying they should just die then? Oh, I'm no, very I'm... sorry, but, you know, you didn't earn enough money. The boss didn't give you that raise. Yeah, sorry. It sucks to be you. That is that genuinely your position? Pretty much. Rare conservative honesty, to be honest. What's wrong with being conservative? You so? literally just said people should die if they can't afford healthcare, and you're here saying what's wrong with that approach. Let's bring on another high-profile uh, YouTuber. Uh, again, I've always watched him from afar. No real issues with him. I uh, quite admire him, actually. Um, okay, what's his real name? Uh, Mr. Tardis is his real name, I believe. Awesome. How, you doing? How you doing, my friend? Hey, hey is, is this Tardis. thing on? Can you hear me? Yes, of I course. Can hear you. How are you doing? How are you doing? Yeah, doing good. Uh, I apologize nice if I'm a little if I'm a little bit slow. I've just done like a four hour live stream. Saw this was happening and thought I'd hop on real quick. Four hour live stream, bro. That's that's tough, man. That's tough. Yeah. Oh, he he I, live streams I, a lot though. I he, I always kind of go to Mr. Tardis for anything kind of going on with Doctor Who that, that I don't really give a shit about beyond 1989. But if I ever kind of want to get an idea what's going on with the modern stuff, I will always check out your channel. It's a good channel. It's no, well, thank you. Uh, I, also, I did a 12 hour stream for charity last November as well. So uh, yeah, yeah. I sir. saw that. I did see that what, one. What, yeah. did you, what did you donate to? Uh, the film and TV charity, because because uh, if you're from America, Lance, uh, in the UK, yeah. because we had lockdowns and stuff, freelance self-employed people did not get any sort of government assist or even though the industry had shut down, they were told like, like freelance, like uh, sort of um, unemployment, like, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like they, they, even though there were uh, many people were furloughed in the UK, so they got 80 percent of their wages to stay at home. The TV love, industry didn't get anything I like that. Film, that's, that. That's a good cause, man. That's a good yeah. cause. So, yeah, raised nearly 3,000 pounds for it. But yeah, so but I, so yeah, I apologize. Nice if I'm a bit slow uh, in, during yeah, this conversation. Right, you were, I'm sure you're, you're, listen, you're, you're a seasoned professional. I'm sure you'll be fine. What do you want to say? Well, uh, yeah, it's to bring it back to Rusty Davis because I know that you've been talking about religion and stuff like that. Let's bring it back yeah, on yeah, topic. Yeah. Let's, let's, uh, let's yes, have, bring, bring it back, Mr. Tynes, mm. to how we were originally supposed to begin the stream. Go on. Yes, that would be <laughs> terrific. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, what I'd like to do is to try and play devil's advocate for Russell T. Davis, if I may, um, okay. because uh, the, if have you seen that video of him giving the speech, the acceptance speech at that Sky Awards yeah, show? Yeah, we've played it. Yeah, we've played it on here already. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So he says at the end of it, um, uh, just so you know, Tory voters in this room, you're voting for murderers, bastards, liars, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And, and abusers, and abusers, and this is abusers, the guy that yeah. hired Mel Clark. Yeah, the guy that hired Mel Clark. Well, I, I, I think he was more just talking about uh, just the general political thing as opposed to, uh, you know, being a, being Actually a boss. Actually hiring an abuser, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, I've even talked about this on stream. I don't agree with that either. Uh, and that's the main thing I'm worried about for his upcoming tenure, about the duty of care so, and stuff so like that. Let me get some context for this first. What are the two political parties in Britain and which Labour, Labour, who you don't want to vote for, Conservatives, they're okay. Those are the main ones that you want to kind of go Yeah, it's, it's more or less a two-party so system. Tories, then? What? So Tories would be, Tories are Republicans, and for you, your Democrats would be the Labour Party. Yeah. Mm, okay, okay. Yeah. So he said, he basically said that uh, we, Republicans like me, are, scum, like me, are, like, are like dumb and um, killers and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah, but, the re but what people forget about that clip is that the first 30, 40 seconds of it was where I, like, he outlines that opinion. Because It's a Sin was written from personal experience and about the AIDS crisis in the 80s and things like that. And it's because of uh, conservative ideology and conservative policies at the time. Uh, if you've seen It's a Sin, there's a scene where one of the main characters pisses in Margaret Thatcher's coffee and it's very therapeutic, I imagine. Uh, so as someone who grew up in the AIDS crisis in the 80s, who saw his friends literally die through conservative policy and conservative apathy, I think that's the approach that he was taking that speech from. Do you deny that that is unvalid outrage from his, like, from his perspective, watching his friends yes. die? Yes. So obviously from his perspective, yes. But my solution to, um, to this, is, I believe it's a sin, is, is if you don't want AIDS, then, then don't subject yourself with um, homosexual like, like stuff. But like straight people can get AIDS. Sex, if you refrain from sex, then you probably, you, you actually, you won't get AIDS if you refrain from sex or in sexual like actions. If, if you, if, if his friends really didn't want AIDS and all this other stuff, try as much protection, protection as you can. But I don't really believe that like Republicans were like the killers. They were the bad people for this and that. Like it was a crisis. Like I believe everyone was like, yeah, we need to kind of stop this. Uh, and, um, and well, um, like, well, actual way to like solve AIDS was just like things to slow it down and you know. 
well, two points, straight people can get AIDS, but secondly, yes, like yes, Ronald yes, Reagan yes, and Margaret yes, Thatcher yes, actively, yes, dis yes. Uh, they actively try to suppress research into it, try to repress treatment so that these communities would disproportionately get this disease that was killing them. It was actually, yes, well, and, I, and I believe that, you know, wrath is a sin, you know, inflicting wrath upon a community. Surely that's a sin. That's a worse sin than pride. No, isn't I, don't it? Believe, I don't believe that. I think obviously we should try our best uh, in the uh, scientific and uh, research, uh, you know, all of our facilities to try to get um, all these, uh, you know, like I HIV, AIDS, all this kind of stuff, like an actual um, like cure and stuff. Of course, I believe that. And of course, it's wrong for somebody to generally do that. Um, but saying that to like a crowd of people that probably had nothing to do with like the AIDS crisis and probably the politicians nowadays, like Boris Johnson didn't have anything to do with the AIDS crisis and, and Nigel Farage and all these other people. Um, it doesn't really make any sense to say like, fuck you, like you guys are voting for killers when most of these people that are in the Tory party now, I assume, didn't really have anything to do with the AIDS crisis. They were probably too young to become in office. No, it's, so, more, the, it's more the ideology. And it's also that uh, there's many parallels between the AIDS crisis as, uh, and everything that's happened with COVID as well. When you've got people like Boris Johnson... Hang on, hang on, hang on. I, thought, I, thought, hang on I thought AIDS was real. When you've got Boris Johnson saying, let the bodies pile high in their thousands. When you've got his advisor, Dominic Cummings, yeah, saying, um, uh, Dominic Cummings saying, let kill all the pensioners just keep the economy protected like these are things that they've said like uh, when they've actively a business owner i want the economy running i don't know about you, a you can... yeah, I, 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 and i feel like a lot of people got disproportionately affected even in black communities and all these other communities by the lockdowns more so than actual covid because most of the deaths are from very people i have asthma mm -hmm. severe asthma and what is um covid it's a respiratory disease I got it. I still survived because I have a good immune system. Most of the people were affecting. It was um, more so fat and obese people and very, very, very old people that were dying from COVID. And generally speaking, the occasional just like it shit hit the fan and you died because of COVID. Is, is that still a reason why you should let a disease tear through a population? Yes. Um, I don't think that locking down like the entire country was a good idea. Like, no, bad idea. Again, as a business owner, bad idea. Yeah. And it's not even about just the money. It's about like people actually being able to live. Like you can't pay for like your kid's food because of this disease and you can't go out and get toilet paper. I think that some, maybe the government's doing something wrong. I mean, so. you're still able to do that with a temporary lockdown. It's it's sort of like, it's one of those no, things where it, you restrict. Do you like lockdowns, Mr. Like lockdowns? And then they like kept gaining more and more power and keep getting more laws passed. And they just generally kept going way too far with it. We were probably okay with uh it generally saying two weeks okay we can do two weeks turned out to be like what uh, a year or more of just lockdowns and just constant like all this kind of crazy stuff dude it's it's insane as someone like 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 i said i work in the tv and film industry i was someone who was disproportionately affected by these lockdowns with no government assistance and things like that i absolutely empathize with those who are unable to uh live their lives in a, in a proper income during that time but i also acknowledge that those uh, uh those limited uh freedoms uh, for that short span of time was a more a net good in the long term for the population i think it was handled terribly in the uk and in america as well i wouldn't agree with that so so people like gavin newsom you probably don't know who he is maybe you do maybe you don't i'm not trying to insult name rings a bell um so he's the governor of california and and he ended up taking a lot of people who had covid and he deliberately put them in um he put them in uh nursing homes and with old people and all this kind of other stuff and um, a lot of old people died because of that. Because that they, happened in the UK as well. Um, people oh, yeah, got yes. old people got COVID in hospitals, and then they were just yeah. sent into nursing homes. Yes, and it just kept getting worse and worse with the, all the old people. Um, and that was done by what you would call a Labour Party person or a, a Democrat. That was that was done by a lot of the Democrats for the majority of the time. Governor DeSantis and all these other people were like. You have the freedom to wear a mask, but you don't have to. You have the freedom to get your vaccine. I don't have a vaccine because I don't want to get. I don't want to get the vaccine. No. I, I don't believe that it will actually help. It helps whatsoever. I have all the other vaccines, but this vaccine was literally made in like a year and a half. I don't trust it. It needs long term like testing. Okay, I am not getting the COVID vaccine, and I never never will in my lifetime. But but saying like you have to get these certain things and you have to wear a mask or you get kicked out of a store or you get fired from your job or this and that. 
that is inherently wrong because everybody deserves a chance to feed their family. Okay. It's, I think, I believe that if you were, if you're working hard, uh, you should be able to go out and work. You don't, you should not be forced in your home. I don't want, I don't want the government paying me money. The people, if you want to do that, just go on state benefits. But, well, cause uh, um, well, like you mentioned, uh, Gavin Newsom, I don't know everything about, uh, his policies, of course, yes, of course. Uh, but, but if he's a, a basically, uh, a modern day Democrat, then it's probably not someone I, I would support. Our current labor party is, uh, very neoliberal. Uh, so they're, I wouldn't say they're as well, bad as conservatives, but, uh, I left us socialist. Oh God! Why, why? Why would you? Why would you want to? You seem like an intelligent guy. Why would you want to be something as stupid as that? That's where all the data goes. I'm afraid. You know, I I didn't uh, choose. What, what, I didn't choose what, this what, life. What, the life chose me. What data? You know, I just okay. What, forget uh, the data. Let me data ask you a question. question. Yeah, go for it. What data? What data? No, 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 I, I can't answer two questions goes, at the same time. Okay, listen, 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 listen. Uh, forget the data right now. I want to ask you like a question about socialism. Go for it. And and let me say it in full. Do you seriously think that a world where everyone gets paid the same and, and everyone has a certain a set amount of land and there's really no billionaires or millionaires or anything like that or TV stars that earn over millions of dollars, do you really think the world would be an exciting place to live in? And do you believe that everyone having the same baseline, everything, everyone's equally as poor, do you really, really believe that that would be an exciting world to live in? No, I don't believe that because I believe that's like, not that's not what I'm advocating for. There's, there's people who do like crazy shit on TV and they have old crazy cars and stuff like that. There's a need for millionaires and there's also a need for people who work at McDonald's. There's a need for everyone in this society. I believe that in a society where everyone's absolutely at like all of the same equity, they have the same everything, the same car, the same everything and, and equal and everything, the world would be kind of a boring place in my opinion. So someone's got to be at the bottom and then someone's got to be in the middle. Someone's got to be at the top. That's, to the work. Well, that's not what I'm advocating for though. I, 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 I said, I said like halfway through your answer and you kept on talking. I don't advocate for that. Basically what I advocate for is a, we, is a redistribution of wealth and for the workers to have democratic control over the places that they work in for the most part. Uh, right. Why? Okay, I I don't I don't agree with that because um, there's no risk involved with being a employee of McDonald's, but there is a huge risk uh, in in putting all your money to create the company and you have years of stress and you create this company just for the workers to own it who just got hired yesterday. I don't think that that's that that's okay. I think it's morally more correct that. The, the, the main guy is getting more of the money because he had all the risk in making the business yeah. because he had to put I'm, all I'm not work. advocating for that though I'm advocating for, uh, you, said, you, for... Said, you, said, you said generally speaking is the uh, com companies should work like a democracy and the workers should own like the company like generally. the means of production yes yeah so basically, uh, I, while I acknowledge that, you know, bosses and people who own the companies who do take the risk to create the companies should be rewarded for that. I don't think that they should be rewarded several hundred times more than the workers who maintain and keep the business going. There okay, is, of course, the startup. But that... so making all the hard decisions and they have to they have to make the stock prices go up. They have to please all the customers and, and they have to make all these huge, important decisions. All the worker does is place box down, put thing, boom, whatever. Okay. I do believe I do believe that that workers generally should be paid a little bit more than they are now because well, ideally quite a bit more. Tuition and minimum wage are not like are, are not uh, the same, and a lot of other things like that. And college tuitions have higher. You know, paying for a house is much higher back than since the '80s and stuff like that. It's so much harder to get like um, a crazy good job and all this kind of stuff. But I do not believe that that these workers should um, be earning that much of the company. I believe that if you have all of that risk and and you're at the top and you're making all those decisions and and if if you fuck up, if you fuck up you get kicked out you get another the other guy gets in but right? if those decisions impact those who are actually doing the work and doing the processes i think they should have a say on that and yeah I, i'm not disputing that people at the, that people at the top should be able to have maybe a slightly bigger piece of the pie but i thought but i thought you were a bible absolutionist like gluttony that's a sin isn't it what's a sin Gl uh, gluttony gluttony Gl gluttony gluttony is yeah. one of the seven deadly sins isn't it yes yes engorging yourself with food and becoming okay. a fat yeah and, and, uh, okay how about well, greed which is in my opinion gluttony with a different name being being greedy is is constantly like worshiping money and stuff like that but Nothing becoming rich technically isn't really a sin but literally what it well, your are you life going life against life. the bible you know, greediness, greediness is more is more the worship of money over god then um, generally, like, I don't care about money that much. I don't care about, like, 
this status. I would love to be, I'd love to have a family and have enough money to survive, but I'm not going to be a billionaire or millionaire because in the Bible, it does say like a millionaire trying to get into heaven is like trying to go like putting a horse or a donkey through like the eye of a needle. Mm-hmm. Okay. Much harder for these people to go to heaven. And I agree with that. Yes. But generally speaking, if you have all that, like all that risk and all that stress and all that bad stuff, um, you generally should not um, let the workers make those decisions. And, and generally speaking, they do have a decision. If they don't like what the company's doing and they don't, they don't like the direction, they can quit and they can go to another company that they would like to work for. Okay, so you basically, you you, so quit. basically, you're just uh, what do you call it? Uh, you pr- you prefer the idea of uh, of an autocracy. I I, I I generally do not like to, to put myself in boxes or anything like that. So I would not say I believe with everything of an autocracy. I don't care. I believe in uh, what I believe in and I don't put a label on my economic beliefs. But my conservative beliefs are definitely like they're morally conservative. OK, so uh, let, let's get back to because I feel like we've gone way off topic here in terms of uh, like Rusty Davis and things like that. Uh, so considering that, like I said, his uh, like conservative policies and conservative ideology w- uh, was responsible for the deaths of several of his friends in the 1980s, like hundreds of thousands of people uh, killed in the AIDS crisis in the 80s. So who was responsible? Uh, the uh, the political systems that let an entire community down and deliberately let them die. Real quick, real quick. Um, so, first of all, it's not 100% the government's fault. No, I'm not, I'm not saying 100%. But... Also, it's also because a lot of these people with HIV and AIDS were actively going out and spreading and not telling people that they had the disease as well. No, I don't, and, I don't and, condone so, that. A lot, of, a lot of it is that, and a lot of it is you just generally don't know that you have it as well. But um, people generally speaking, wouldn't tell people that they had AIDS and then they would go have and sleep with people and give them AIDS. So one reason there- for that, however, because remember, we we live in a society uh, is because there was a stigma around the disease because it was seen as a gay disease. Uh, so that's that conservative stigma I mean, I mean, contributes to it. There's a stigma against like every disease. Let's say like like COVID, like it, you don't want to sleep with somebody with COVID. You're not going to be like, I want to sleep with you when you have COVID because you're, you're going to get no, disease. COVID is more, is, uh, is like, COVID was like a, a, a really change anything. COVID well, didn't really discriminate uh, based on like how it affected you, it did. But in terms of catching it in the first place, didn't really discriminate. Whereas like in the 80s, AIDS was known as like the, the gay disease. It had that stigma against it in the 1980s. Whereas a stigma generally, like that doesn't really exist with more, COVID. Generally speaking, more gay people have AIDS than anybody, any other sort of group. Yeah, and, it, it, it can disproportionately yeah. affect a group. But yes, yeah. when, it, when, it, when it's, when it's framed through a media narrative people. of it being the gay disease, there's a stigma it against it. So people didn't tell them that they had it. There's a great, there is a great TV show called It's a Sin. You should watch it. It does kind of dive into all of this. Um, I know Russell made that show, didn't he? Um, hmm. uh, yeah. generally, I just don't think that it was okay of him just to like say like you're voting for killers and all this kind of stuff because that's just honestly. Kind of like, yeah, and again, and again, I, you know, uh, just, but, because for, because they were voting for the same people that were alive. Too. I, on, with Russ T. Davis's statement at the Sky Arts Awards, I think he was not only completely on the money; he might have actually understated it. I think he might have actually let them off a bit easy. Why? Because he he calls them what is it? He calls them uh, murderers, yes. liars. Yeah, and basically they absolutely are. Their actions, uh, the right. current Conservative Party, uh, who no, not responsible for the AIDS crisis directly in the nineteen eighties, but absolutely uh, responsible for the past ten years of Tory austerity in the UK. I know, Lance, you in America, you what won't austerity? Know. Hang on, whoa, whoa, what austerity? What austerity? What austerity? Yeah, what, what austerity? <laughs> what austerity? Don't repeat back what I'm saying. What austerity? <laughs> okay in a layman's my, terms my personal finances oh yeah, my personal finances have never been greater thank you very much so i don't know about i'm doing brilliant cool great then you're allowed to do that great i'm talking about general averages and how uh, wages have not kept up to date with inflation how our uh, public services such as the nhs and others have been uh, uh, cut to the... can't we just privatize that no why? Because some people can't afford. Basically, well, that's to be them then, doesn't it? I guess. So you're a eugenicist. What? Basically, if you, if if you can't afford to have the treatment, go die. Uh, Is that well, what you're advocating for? 
No, but when the NHS becomes basically the COVID only service in the last two years and they won't see anybody, I had I had loads of friends who basically decided just to go private in the NHS in the last two years because yeah, that uh, bastard same. fucking organisation yeah. couldn't uh, actually go and see, they couldn't be seen. Yeah, d- uh, uh, you know, a decade of underfunding will do that to a health service during a pandemic. Tory austerity well, they, they, did yeah, that. So we, kind of, we actually agree there, Mr. Tardis. There we go. That's yeah, nice. To- yeah, cons- yeah, conservative yeah. austerity yeah. was leading to that it's issue my, that you had. Listen. My reason for existing isn't to protect a failing institution. Oh, okay. D- you know, don't fail it and let it stand up on its own then. Okay. So we, okay. we basically privatise it then. Let it stand up on its own two feet. So you think that if you... So you want it something more akin to the American... I can afford system. it. I can afford it. Oh, cool. Great great for you. What about people who can't do it? Should they just go die? No, get a job. What if the job still can't pay, afford the, for the payments? Then you work out with your employer... Um, a Medicare system like they have in the States that will benefit them. Okay, and what for the Medicare system, which basically doesn't go nearly far enough to make sure that people of lower incomes are, are able to get healthcare in America. Like, what, what about those people who the healthcare is not enough or they get into a massive amount of debt because they can't afford their insulin? Well, that's unfortunate. But then, So, you so know, you're saying they should just die then? Oh, I'm no, very I'm sorry, sorry, but, you know, you didn't earn enough money. The boss didn't give you that raise. Yeah, sorry. It sucks to be you. That is that genuinely your position? Pretty much. Okay. I'm glad. Th- I, I appreciate the honesty. It's rare conservative honesty, to be honest. Yeah. What's wrong with being conservative? you got a problem with Margaret Thatcher. You literally just said people should die if they can't afford health care, and you're here saying what's wrong with that approach. What's wrong with... No, I, I said what's wrong with Margaret Thatcher. Okay, well, the uh, abolition of workers. Uh, okay, abolition of uh, workers' rights in the nineteen uh, eighties. Uh, you know, with the, the busting of the unions and things like that. Austerity, basically. Benefit, they're, they're kind of, benefit, benefit, I'll tell you something. Margaret Thatcher's time benefited my family immensely. You know, uh, business, cool. property, works. Cool, Fantastic. great. Cool, I'm great. So your approach, though, is uh, fuck you. Got mine. Yep. Pretty much cool. like okay. basically i listen i worked hard to get where i got to i didn't get on benefits i never claimed a single thing i worked flipping hard side of school to get where i am today so everyone out listen, listen here's my approach to life you'll be given the uh a blueprint to life or a map a little map to kind of say okay let's see what, what we can do here you can go down this road that road and on the way you're going to meet obstacles you will meet hardship you will meet success you will have failings but you have the chance to pursue this journey to success you might get there you might not but there's the map go off good luck okay <laughs> cool mm-hmm. yeah so i'm not really i'm not really sure what that has to do uh with anything that i've basically said um but so i because um lance is kind of dipping in and out of the call so you know we can we can chat if you want to um that's why yeah. it's a pleasure I'm no. doing this. Go, no, one thing to talk about, because I know that I've not watched much of your stuff. Uh, I mainly, f- I first heard of you when you were like stalking Nicholas Briggs on Twitter. Um, yeah, that was fun. Yeah, I enjoyed mm, that. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, he's a work moronic, uh, libtard, slimeball toad. Cool. Uh, so when it comes to um, something that I have, I'm not, I don't know your full position, but I've seen like some of your video titles uh, about uh, the BBC. I yes, am... we need to get rid of the BBC. We, the BBC, we will take. We should be able to take care of the BBC like that. Just get rid of it. Don't need it. Be gone. Okay. Awful organisation. Awful people. So just to put my... Um... I know people that have worked there, by the way, and they will absolutely uh, um, uh, back me up on that. Disgusting cool. organisation. So some so f- full cards on the table. Uh, I don't work for the BBC on a contracted capacity. I'm freelance in the TV and film industry, so my services go anywhere: Netflix, uh, Disney, Channel Four, BBC, etc. So those are my that's my biases, uh, so to speak, on the table. Uh, so what what's what's the issue with the BBC then? If if you were controller the issue for a is, day, I don't, why do you have to have a license for television? I drive several cars, uh, you know, and I uh, and and and. You, know, you have to have a license to drive a car. I can understand that. Why do you need a license to watch TV? It is the most stupidest thing ever. I can understand having a license to drink or proven identification to go and get alcohol, driving a car, driving any kind of heavy goods vehicle, a license to watch TV. Um, I think do you not understand how stupid that is, particularly when most of it is, uh, is fake. Um, so honestly because you said you drive several cars i yeah. um i drive the one car i drive one car um okay. uh but i 
you know, I pay road tax. I pay for, you know, you to be able to use the roads uh, for your multiple cars. Um, I pay council tax to go towards libraries that I do not use. I pay my taxes to go towards a, a fire department, even though I've never caught the fire brigade, et cetera, et cetera. So as far as I'm concerned, on principle, I'm okay paying a fee if it means that an industry that is a net economic good for the country can be can carry on so that people uh, are able to get unlimited radio whenever they want and uh, access to a TV library, uh, 24-7 media unlimited coverage. Unlimited radio? I mean... <laughs> I mean, you turn on a radio uh, and the BBC is always there. You know, what about commercial radio? What about, you, what, what about commercial radio? Cool. You can tune that on if you want to, but if some people don't want adverts, if they want something that will... Uh, that they basically own, I'm happy with that. So... You're, uh, let's, let's get it straight then. So you think it's perfectly legitimate in this uh, supposed, you know, cost of living crisis that an unnecessary payment, probably the most unnecessary payment of all is the license fee. And it, there's no reason for it. You could dispense of it immediately. And the BBC, if their stuff is so good, which I don't happen to think it is, but if people it, it will flock to it and they'll watch it, then you can either do it behind a paywall, what, five ninety nine a month? How much do you pay for Netflix? Seven ninety nine a month? You could do that at the BBC very easily, commercialise it very easily. That would make it would make a killing in the in the commercial sector. I mean it wouldn't, but but you know, that would be the argument in favour of it that oh well it's so popular that it'll do fine. Well, when it comes to like uh, you brought up Netflix as an example, Netflix is you know a global uh, superpower. You know it has what three hundred million subscribers worldwide, um, and it has un undisputably an incredible like array of shows and talent and uh, you know turn it on and it's there whatever. But um, however, that's a company that is perpetually in debt and is hemorrhaging money, whereas something like the BBC is able to keep not not just TV, you know, like radio, bite size, uh, the proms, uh, a whole surplus of documentaries and archive material that Netflix will it doesn't have to do. BBC live events as well, uh, trying to actually continue and maintain the industry that it's in by apprenticeship programs, trying to train up the next group of people. Channel Four also has apprenticeship programs, uh, but they are also a public well, we're service. Now. Hopefully, that 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 will be privatised soon and uh, put out of service, which is which is a good thing. Okay, so you so even though Channel Four does not take uh, is not in receipt of any license fee money, you also want to get rid of that as well. Yeah, why not? How, well, well, no, why? Left wing. Is that so, a good enough reason? Okay, <laughs> such as? You've seen their news, right? Their news is the yeah, most, like, yeah, so you, honestly, you can give me an example. filthy, vermin, left-wing thing I've ever seen in my life. Yes, you can give me an example. <laughs> well, okay. Well, did you watch the most uh, recent debates that they did with the Conservative Party and the way oh. that the bias that was on show and that audience was absolutely ridiculous? Well, if you look at the polling, that by, that audience seemed to be pretty representative of the actual public, to be honest. Okay, there was no questions on immigration, a big, big topic. That wasn't brought up. There what was... got brought up is, would you have Boris Johnson in your cabinet? What's that got to do with anything? It was stupid shit. And then it was the one who I actually did like. I kind of vague. Well, I don't know him, but my mum knows him a bit. Uh, Tom, uh, I can't remember his full name now. But he, I know he really just... He really disappointed me because he was good to start out with. And then he started going on about how, oh, um, I just want to thank the NHS because they gave me my children. No, no, no. Your, you and your wife gave you your children. Your NHS didn't give you your children. I mean, that, but, but it was all that kind of virtual signaling <laughs> nonsense. To, to be fair, many people die in pregnancy if they're not given medical treatment. So it's probably more like the medical care to see a childbirth through. Okay. So, anyway, but yeah, so yeah, I, I watched the debates as well. I didn't watch the the because the second one was uh, cancelled, wasn't it? Because Rishi and Luz, and, and Trust pulled out. Yeah, I did watch the yeah, first one. Yeah, 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 yeah. The presenter was like really, really soft on them. Really softball questions. Um, like the, yeah, no questions on uh, the climate crisis, even though within a like uh, oh, within God. a few days of that debate, we had the forty degree temperature, things like that. Yeah, that yeah. had nothing to do with climate change, by the way. That was just a really nice day. Cool. Uh, so when it did comes you go out to anywhere, did you, did you go and enjoy the sun? Uh, no, I was working from home. Thankfully, I didn't have to go out and about. What do you do from home? What's your job? Uh, this YouTube channel when I'm not doing freelance stuff. Uh -huh. So when I'm not doing freelance TV and media work, I do my YouTube channel. Who's um, the most famous person you know? Who's the most uh, high profile person? If I was to go through your mobile phone, who would I find? Who's the biggest like name you got there? Um, I actually would rather keep on topic. I want to know what is it about the BBC that you find really left-wing? 
I just find it's a disgusting organisation, to be completely honest with you, and uh, we don't need to fund it out of our own money. Next yeah, question. But, no, but can you give an example uh, apart from just your own personal ideology, yeah, uh, ideological? Uh, the pedophile, that seems to be one. Uh, again, Noel Clark, you know, uh, Jimmy Savile, mm -hmm. Tim Westwood, so, who, by the way, by the way, I happen to know someone who knew Tim Westwood, and yeah, I can definitely say those stories are true. Um, you'll get, uh, yeah, and that will happen in basically any organization with a power structure. It's more like the BBC, doesn't it? And then, and then, of course, the Martin Bashir uh, uh, interview with uh, Princess Diana. Yeah, don't, and yeah. then also having a go at uh, at our own army, our own troops, who many several of my friends actually go out and serve. Well, that so panorama that really, investigation. That, that, that wasn't really nice, was it? Well, the, the panorama investigation when they were found to have uh, committed war crimes. Yeah. So, you, so your issue was that the BBC d discovered that, as opposed to the war crimes happening. They weren't war crimes. Uh, ki you know, killing and abusing civilians is considered a war crime. They were out there serving this country. You can do that without committing war crimes, though. They were out there serving the country. Cool. Great. Uh, so, yeah, for the BBC, you know, when it comes to organizations with a general power structure, yeah, you're definitely going to get some abuse. Uh, like, this is not a BBC exclusive thing, of course. You know, this happens in any organization. For example, you know, we had that uh, conservative uh, MP in Wakefield who was convicted of um, of uh, sexually assaulting a minor. Yeah. You know, or it's, it's, it's going to, but I'm not going to say. You had, you had the lady from the Labour Party, the verminous, wretched, disgusting Labour Party that took us to an illegal war, by the way, which is always fun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fuck Tony Blair. I don't like that guy. You're not going to trip me up on that one yeah, yeah. you know he's, um, he's he, he also he also shouldn't be committing war crimes you know i think the bbc, BBC should have done more panoramas against him um but yeah any, anything else like in terms of uh ideology for the bbc how about i just don't like the fact you have to pay for it i just don't yeah, see why well, how about we just why see well, i don't use a library and i will never get any sort of use out of that service but i'm okay yeah, but to pay that tax for other people a library, though. you're not paying for a library it, it go no, it goes towards the maintaining and the stocking of that library and the staff who who run it. Wait, but in that organisation now, like the BB, I went. By the way, where's where's our main guest gone this evening? By the way, I I, I'm not sure. I, I think he, I'm I think I'm maybe he heard, he heard you wanting to commit war crimes and thought this is a step too far <laughs> for me. But yeah. But um, he's but, gone, Lance. Come back. This was supposed to be you and me, but now it's turned into me and Mr. Tardis, and I've only got like literally two minutes left. Um, oh, okay. So if you only got a couple of minutes left, I apologize uh, if I have to keep. No, you. no, that's fine. I'm, I'm enjoying the little ding dong we're having here. Yeah, but um, yeah. So I didn't like. Uh, what about the because the net economic benefit of the BBC? Because the media industry is an ecosystem. For every pound the BBC gets in license fee funding, the UK economy gets almost three pounds back. You know, you got an issue with that? Uh, yes, I, I, I look, my issue simply with the BBC, okay, cards on the table, right? No, no trolling. I'm trying to wind you up a little bit, which you probably knew. Um, it, here's the issue I have with the BBC is in the past, has it done good stuff? Yes, 100%. I've enjoyed many of their shows growing up, Doctor Who amongst them. Um, not mostly the modern stuff, classic series, 63 to 89, all the stuff the BBC used to do, like Lion Witch in the Wardrobe, uh, the Chronicles of Narnia series, Five Children and It. They were great for doing Sunday afternoon family tea time stuff. Used to watch it with my nan. It was brilliant. Happy memories. Uh, they, in the past, they've done groundbreaking documentaries. No doubt about it. My issue is now, it is, it's not a sustainable uh, mechanism of funding in a world today of streaming services, YouTubing, multi-channels that, that stretch the lengths and breadths of the stratosphere of television and the internet and beyond. It's hard to maintain, surely, the justification for paying that much every year or every month or however you pay it for an organization that produces now in comparison to other services, subpar stuff. I mean, come on, Stranger Things, brilliant show uh, on Netflix. Uh, what was the other cracking show they did? Uh, 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 Tiger King, Netflix. There's been so many stuff that's come out of Netflix that's been brilliant in the last few years, and I can't think of one well, out of the BBC. However, Not Netflix, Netflix hemorrhages money. Apple TV is a loss leader for talent to Apple in order for them to get talent on board. Uh, Amazon Prime hemorrhages money for Amazon. Uh, the, like this, even though Netflix does definitely do great content, it does not compete in the economic marketplace without uh, massive investment for people who want to try and get a return on that investment. Whereas the BBC is able to offer that and it's just objectively significantly more avenues for uh, for media from radio from bite size to children's etc and you know youtube as well is a great competitor but it also does hemorrhage money like it hemorrhages money for google 
So you talk about wanting to try and uh, have a free marketplace where these companies are able to stand up on their own volition and their own economics, and they're just not able to do so. Whereas, like you know, Channel Four is a public broadcaster, but it made a profit last year as well. It's able to re just you know refund that. Yeah, and Channel Four have done. I, I've said in the past on this channel, Channel Four uh, have done some groundbreaking stuff. Uh, you know, I remember when Queer as Folk came out the first time, and it was a hundred percent. That was groundbreaking. But I just think now, my friend, in the in the world that we live in today, it is getting harder and harder to justify the way it's funded. Look. Yeah, I was winding up a little bit in some respects there, but in all seriousness, do I think the BBC should be totally gotten rid of? On my best day, when I actually like them, no. I just think it should be um, um, decriminalised the licence fee. On my worst day, then I'll just say basically get rid of it. But I actually think there's maybe an in-between to be found because it is going to change, regardless of who the government is in the next... Uh, I mean, look, for, from your point of view, right, it's a great time to be a Labour guy because I'll tell you something, my friend, if Labour can't win against these two halfwits they've got now in Rishi and um, Liz, then um, um, Labour will never win. But I reckon you guys will get in in, what is it, 2024? I don't, I don't know. Keir Starmer seems to be doing everything he can to not. No, I think I think you will. I think you guys have uh, you're in a good position right now. I think if my girl, uh, the gorgeous, amazing Penny Mordant, uh, had got in, then you would have had a bit of a problem. But uh, no, I think you're um, you're heading in the right direction. So, um, anything else you wanted to talk about, or any more? Uh, I wonder ideas where my guest has gone. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know either. One thing I actually did want to, because I wanted him to come back and uh, and explain something on Twitter. Uh, he was, uh, from my interpretation, he was calling uh, Russell T. Davis a groomer um, on on Twitter. So I'm kind of curious what what he'd have to say about that, or to try and defend himself. Well, I got a message from me. So he's going to pop back in a second, but uh, we got a uh, we got a punch out. I tell you what, we'll do, my friend. Um, we will reconvene this potentially uh, very very soon. I think. Um, I'm just thinking uh, because time wise, I've actually got to go off and do something in, in a moment. Um, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll reconvene this in the future. And I do want to say, by the way, I, I do actually, contrary to what you might believe, I am actually quite a fan of yours. And it's a, a, and it's a pleasure. Oh, hang on a minute. Um, is he back now? Yeah. I'm worried that if we start talking with Lance, we're not going to start. <laughs> Wait a sec. Who's this? Who's this? Who's that? Hello. Hello? Hello? Who's Hi, that? Hank. Oh, it's me. Hello. Nice to see you. Um, so, um, let's talk about sin. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. This is what I miss, by the way, about the old days of doing radio. I just used to, like, open up the... Uh, I would never have a producer or anyone to screen the course. I'd just be like, yeah, let's come on. And then just <laughs> yell at them. It was always fun. Um... Uh, but yeah, I also wanted to ask um, Lance, uh, well, like, because he mentioned uh, being like uh, pro Roe v. Wade, even though the Bible is uh, is pro is pro abortion. Uh, if you read Exodus twenty one and Mark uh, uh, Mark five twenty five, uh, so it, he seems to be picking and choosing a bit of his Bible passages. Here. Do you know what the funny thing is, right? With this, I never thought that this would end up being a Bible discussion on my channel because I am not religious in the slightest, and I am actually pro choice. I have known many women. Um, one which I won't talk about because it would be portraying trust, but a horrible situation um, she found herself in. And um, her family, extremely religious, and um, long story cut short, she did what the only thing she felt she could do, and, ab and abort, and she got completely exiled from the whole community, you know, and uh, it was it was horrific. So I'm, I am uh, pro-choice. You know, I, I think it's uh, it's important to keep that. Like, again, again, look, if you want to do it, uh, you want to have the child, even though maybe you've come about being pregnant for a horrific rape or something, that, again, is your choice. But if you want to get rid of it, the option should always be there. So I'm not as right wing as you might think. No, I mean, you know, just a, a little bit of war crime, you know, just a little bit. Only when I just want to wind people up. Like, yeah. I mean, you can, like, once again, you can wind people up, much like serving your country, without doing a war crime, you know. That's not something you really do for the lols. I don't know. Depends if you're having a very dull, boring Sunday, you know. I am. Um, <laughs> but no, but in all seriousness, no, of course not. I mean, war crimes. Uh, do, do you think then Tony Blair's a war criminal? Because I will say oh, this. Yeah. I was a member of the Labour Party uh, when um, Tony Blair was there, and I never got to meet him, but all the feedback I got from people was a very positive um, uh, experience meeting him, uh, very genuine, authentic guy. Um, I think uh, him going to war with the Americans was a mistake, but I think he went there for the best of intentions. It just, unfortunately, 
turned out the way it turned out sadly yeah this feels like a massive tangent i yeah but i i think he went because america told him to and they, they thought you know tony my, my main man let's go to the middle east and do crimes together and then they went hand in hand through the meadow and hopefully it has a happy ending where they're both in prison what's what's labor's biggest problem then? why can't labor what right now elected? Well, it, it, okay, you can say what you want about Tony, right? And some of it I actually agree with. But he was an electoral winner. He absolutely was. And I speak mm -hmm. as someone who was at the Labour Party at the time. He was an electoral winner. And ever since then, Labour have just been tying themselves in knots. Now, this is the, the only way they're going to win this election isn't because Labour's good. We know they're not good. But the two candidates, you know, in the offering in the Tories are absolutely horrific. Again, if it was Penny, they, Labour wouldn't stand a chance. But it's not. And I think Labour this time might get it, but they haven't been getting it in the last few years. I mean, Corbyn, what the hell is that about? Uh, so th Corbyn's policies and like the manifesto that they wrote was incredibly popular. It polled incredibly well. It was actually a costed manifesto, whereas the 2019 uh, Conservative one was not costed. It was just a trust me bro in terms of the economics. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, and Lance is back. Um, so I'll, yeah. I'll very quickly wrap up. But I, I think that uh, they hey can't... Guys. Hello. I'm Lance. And oh god no it's not different it's, lands it's, <laughs> no. so it's, the, it's, the, the, i think that um one big thing from if you go into the 2019 lectures i was kids i was there when it happened um is that um like the insane amount of disinformation coming around like for example though you had those like independent uh verifiers who found that zero percent of labor's campaign ads had misinformation whereas like 80 percent of conservative ones did it was just blatant lying it was also a lot of dog whistling yeah they had this whole campaign where they were trying to simultaneously say that jeremy corbyn was anti-semitic but you had boris johnson doing uh campaign videos saying if if corbyn gets in the jews are going to take over so don't vote for him i don't know how that double think existed but that was what happened in 2009 in, in 2019 <laughs> Um, and then when you've got um, so that much disinformation uh, and people, the, the amount of conversations I've had where, oh, I didn't vote for Labour in 2019 because he's anti-Semitic. Oh, what has he done? And then, oh, I don't know. I was just told because the son told me that. A lot of, there's just a lot of political illiteracy in the United Kingdom at the moment. And then that does have very real consequences where the bodies did indeed pile high in their thousands like Boris Johnson wanted. Well, we, we got a, uh, you know what, I, I would love my friend actually to get you back on here. Um, um, and uh, we do a one to one because I think we, uh, I think it'd be quite an interesting conversation for us to get into, particularly COVID, because I got to be honest, I think a lot of it was uh, political. I think a lot of it was manipulation. Does COVID exist? It exists. Does climate change exist? Yes. But I think it was used and manipulated to get us in line, uh, in my humble opinion. Oh, no, they don't need COVID to get us in line. They just, uh, they just, in the uk i think it's you, now free speech is um protesting sorry is now just illegal to do like, they don't need COVID to do that they were going to do it anyway well i, I don't agree and i, I mean I, I do agree with that and one of the things that always has worried me and i've seen this happen in the radio world which is kind of where i come from when um ofcom and the censors started getting involved and you couldn't no longer have free speech open discussion on the air and it's happening now on the internet i mean that what was that bill that was going to get passed it's kind of been put on hold given the fact that the, the government's in turmoil but it was going to get passed and it would basically be a regulatory bill for the internet meaning we probably won't even be able to have conversations like this uh, no it's, it's it's what it's what the conservatives want isn't it but um but yeah yeah it's, i'm disappointed that lance uh decided to, well, to i think he's I mean, there's someone here called lance but i, I don't think know he, if it is yeah, i'm a bit worried that he uh, he decided to flee oh it's, it morbid, it's morbid time lance <laughs> all right all right listen Mr. Yeah, he, it was, he, it was he a, fleed a, from it was from my facts and logic <laughs> it was a pleasure to talk to you actually believe it or not despite a little ding dong there i actually really enjoyed it so it's uh i'm sure you'll probably never check me out again which is fine i mean uh you know all these people tuning in this is the highest viewed stream i've ever had i'm okay with that by the way small time youtube channel that's great but uh it is it is a pleasure to have you uh your viewership and i hope uh i hope um i hope you enjoyed it as well yeah, well, thank you for having me on. And uh, if if Lance ever wants to uh, to chat, if he ever wants to confess his sins, uh, namely uh, desecrating the Bible uh, and uh, you know lust and greed, gluttony, etc., uh, I'm hope his God. I hope I do hope that his God forgives him. I don't know. Uh, my God, Russell T. Davis, uh, will uh, embrace me with his massive open arms.